no contact mistakes. The need to sign off. The most common conclusion to the romantic entanglement of our kind is for you to be disengaged from. Certainly, this is what happens the first time around for most people. Later on, the likelihood of it ending, because you in escape, increases as a consequence of either increased knowledge or awareness and or being unwilling or unable to endure the consequences of your treatment at our hands for any longer. When you have been disengaged from, it is understandably common for the victim to do a number of things, which includes 1. Trying to resurrect the formal relationship with us. 2. Wanting answers as to why you were disengaged from. 3. Wanting answers to understand how you have been treated. 4. Wanting to address outstanding issues, such as repayment of money, return of property, who's going to get the dog. 5. Wanting us to understand how much you love us, how much we have hurt you, how angry you are. Whilst you may very well want to tear several strips off us and give us a peace of mind, it is usually the case that when you have been disengaged from, that your response is not so much an aggressive one, but one more of bewilderment, pleading, trying to get together again and sort matters out, or eventual resignation and hurt with a recognition of the need to tie up those loose ends, such as money owed, return of possessions and so forth. Often, you talk about wanting to achieve closure. The general stance by those disengaged from is not usually aggressive in nature, but is more conciliatory, wanting to part as friends. Even when you have been badly hurt, your empathic nature causes you want to try and draw a line under matters to enable you to move on, even to wish us well, even though it has not worked out. This isn't to say that you have not been angry, furious indeed as to how you've been treated, but those empathic traits of honesty, decency, the desire to heal and fix, invariably outweigh your narcissistic traits of pride and anger. That's why you're an empath. And therefore it is those empathic traits that generally cause you to respond in a way which is conciliatory, constructive, trying to heal from the matter, move forward and move on. When you have been disengaged from, when you were the intimate partner primary source, the main reason why this has happened is because you have been replaced by somebody else. In our world, we now have somebody new, exciting, and with that wonderful positive fuel which we want to last forever. This means that you, as the former intimate partner primary source, is effectively deleted from our minds. This is the ideal opportunity for you to make your no contact as strong as possible. The reason is, nearly all narcissists will be focused on the new, shiny, intimate partner primary source and not interested in you. The only instances where we will demonstrate an interest in you comes from 1. Where you have the misfortune to be on the receiving end of a malice campaign and they are actually very rare. 2. You keep kicking the hornet's nest by causing, doing things to threaten our control, so we are forced to respond to that. Or three, you interpret things that we do as being aimed at you when actually they are not. And that is the misleading consequence of your emotional thinking. The majority of narcissists are now focused on controlling the new intimate partner primary source. All efforts are channeled into that individual because that individual is catering for the majority of the prime aims. Control is easy to obtain. They are being seduced. They are happy. They are in love. Most of our fuel needs are being met by them, character traits and residual benefits, 
and therefore the narcissist has nothing to obtain from you and it's only if you keep reappearing that the narcissist has to assert control over you and of course will gladly accept some negative fuel from you in the process. Accordingly, when the narcissist has moved on from you and disengaged from you as the former intimate partner primary source, you need to keep your emotional thinking down and recognize this is the prime opportunity for you to establish your no contact. Of course, it is very hard because your emotional thinking is sky high and it gets hold of all of your various empathic and narcissistic traits and wants you to continue to engage with us by telling you, get some answers out of him, corrupting your truth seeker trait, go to war with him, corrupting your anger trait. Nobody treats you like this and gets away with it, corrupting your pride trait, and so on. The narcissist is focused elsewhere, and not only do you, are you not needed any longer for the prime aims, we also do not want you interfering with our new embedded prime resource. Remember, the narcissist's inherent need for control generates a paranoia, and if you are seen anywhere near us and our new relationship, the narcissist sees that as a threat to control because you are painted black. Your disengagement, however much it hurts and however unfair it is, actually means you're being given a head start at no contact, but most people fail to realise this and fail to take the opportunity. This is understandable because of the presence of emotional thinking and because they are unable to make sense of what has happened to them. And they don't know what they need to necessarily do. They remain stuck in the emotional sea, unable to make any progress. This desire to sign off and gain some kind of closure by engaging in some of the earlier items I mentioned, and more besides, means that you invariably try to contact us, whether it is in person, by letter, telephone call, electronic message, or a note wrapped around a brick and thrown through our window. At best, you will be politely rebuffed, because... We need to assert control over you, we don't want anything from you, and we want you to stay away from us, because we don't want you messing up the new golden period with our new shiny plaything. If you accept that rejection as day out of the way, you are highly unlikely to hear anything more from us until the new intimate partner prime resource is devalued, and then, because they're painted black, you become painted white, which increases the risk of you being hoovered. Of course, all subject to how strong your no-contact regime is. However, if you continue to want to, to achieve the sign-off by engaging in some form of sustained contact with us, you will then start to receive malign hoovers from us in an effort to drive you away by asserting control over you. We will threaten you. We will say that we are going to get a restraining order, and indeed may well do that. We will call the police. We will also assert control indirectly by smearing you and triangulating you with the new intimate partner prime resource. Prior to that, our behavior towards the intimate partner prime resource is, is not connected to you. But when you start to make, in our minds, a nuisance of yourself, we will then triangulate you, as that is part of asserting control over you. However, it will not end there. If you eventually do stay away and look at implementing no contact, your post-disengagement behaviour has generated a significant risk to maintaining that no contact. You have already been painted black by virtue of being a treacherous and failed appliance from our perspective. Your failure to accept that you have been disengaged from, evidenced by the fact that you keep contacting us, not only infuriates us because we see it as our right to engage in the golden period with the new primary source free from your interference, but you're also failing to do what we want. You are threatening our control. We will issue malign hoovers, of course, to draw negative fuel from you when you engage with us. But the main reason we are doing this is to assert control over you. Your insolent behaviour for not staying out of our way means that when follow-up hoovers occur at a later stage, subject as always to whether there is a hoover trigger and the hoover execution criteria are met, 
you run the risk of there becoming a malice obsession trigger because of your behaviour. Notice again how it's always your fault, and therefore there are repeated hoover triggers, and that could then spark a malice campaign against you. Accordingly, when your replacement is now being devalued, we of course are looking for a replacement for them, and one of two things can happen. We will be either devaluing the existing primary source, seduce a fresh prospective primary source from elsewhere, and malign however you as the former intimate partner primary source because you have triggered a malice campaign, or we will devalue the existing primary source, who is your replacement, and then hoover you by seducing you again to draw you back in. You will be drawn back in, and although retaining the title of former intimate partner primary source, you will be treated initially in the manner of shelf behaviour, because we will spend time with you, moving back and forth until such time, if it is appropriate, we make you the primary source again. In some instances, where we are behaving maliciously, it is, it is obvious because we are giving you malign hoovers. The more sophisticated of our kind, namely greater than the ultra and possibly upper mid-range, might draw you back in in a benign way and then thereafter giving you the appearance that everything is all right, toy with you by way of elongated periods on the shelf by way of punishment. The desire to seek some kind of sign-off with us is detrimental to your well-being. Not only are you continuing to engage with the narcissist and thus providing us with fuel, you run the risk of an adverse consequence, and you will keep your emotional thinking high because you're breaching no contact. You might be spending time with us. You are communicating with us. You'll be thinking about us. You may be talking about what you're going to do with other people. You may be monitoring what we're doing on social media. And all of these are breaches of no contact and are linked to the desire to sign off to reach closure. Not only in doing all of that are you causing a problem for yourself, but if you are interfering with our new golden period with the intimate partner primary source, you run the risk of triggering either a malice campaign, so we come after you with a vengeance, or further torment by bringing you back under our wing as a shelf appliance in a supposedly benign fashion, but then putting you on the shelf for elongated periods and playing with you. Your repeated failure to do what we wanted post-disengagement threatens our control and means that you run the risk of creating a malice obsession with us and this will cause repeated hoover triggers so that in ordinary circumstances you may well have reduced these hoover triggers to a very low level. But now, because you have caused the malice obsession, you are causing them frequently, with the consequences that follow as we keep hoovering you and hoovering you and hoovering you, looking to punish you by way of disrupting your no-contact regime. Thus, that is the risk where you have been disengaged from. What is the position if you have escaped from us and you seek to sign off? In this situation, you are actually far more likely to have resolved to work things out, planned, and perhaps you even know what th we are. Combine this with how you have been treated by us means that the desire to sign off with us in some way is actually very considerable. In the case of your escape, this usually manifests in the following ways. 1. Seeking to expose us to third parties. 2. Telling us what an awful human being we are. 3. Looking to hurt us in some way. 4. Unleashing your anger on us. 5. Telling us that we need to change and seek help. In essence, where you have escaped, 
Your sign-off is not so much about seeking answers and or sorting things out with us, as it might have been when you've been disengaged from, but it is more about actually getting some form of revenge upon us. It is more about getting one over on us. You will undoubtedly feel better for telling us what obnoxious, unfaithful, hurtful bastards we are. You will feel a sense of relief at telling us how you hate us or how you pity us. You will feel a sense of accomplishment by telling us what we are. However, that is just the misleading effect of your emotional thinking, because you are feeding your addiction by continuing to engage with us. Unfortunately for you, not only are you giving us fuel and increasing your emotional thinking, you are creating a considerable risk to your no-contact regime. First of all, the usual sign-off is just providing us with fuel. We are winning, you are losing. Of course, its content will challenge us, and that will mean that we will have to assert control in some way. That might mean that you get a nasty savage put-down from us, a letter in return, even a personal visit, with unpleasant consequences that follow. Alternatively, you might not hear anything from us, but then you force us to smear you in a greater degree. We go around and pray this letter. Have you seen this rubbish that she's writing about me? How dare she write this? After everything that I've done, and remember, many of these people that the narcissist is speaking to have had a sustained campaign of this smearing beforehand and therefore are on side with the narcissist and look at you as an unfair, nasty individual rather than the victim. Thirdly, if we do not smear you, then we may well just ignore you and then you become frustrated. You may feel at first, good, I've shut him up. But then, because your emotional thinking still remains high, those creeping questions arise. Why is he not answered? Did I perhaps go too far? Why hasn't he responded to what I've said? Perhaps he just doesn't care at all. I thought that he did. I want an answer. I want to know what his reaction is. And of course, that is all emotional thinking. You ought not to have sent the letter or email or text in the first place. And then when you have and you receive no response because our lack of response is asserting control over you, your already high emotional thinking is, is saying to you, feed the addiction more and therefore causes you to wonder why you've not got an answer, to cause you to want to have an answer and so that you might then prod us again. Are you not going to respond to what I've written? It might even cause you to go around and check on us to find out why we haven't responded. And of course, you are now falling into a trap. You are continuing to engage with us. You will give us fuel. You run the risk of an adverse consequence. You will continue to increase your emotional thinking. This need to sign off is driven by emotional thinking. It is not logical. When you send this letter or issue the telephone call or text message, it's fuel-filled and it provides us with a reminder of what an excellent fuel provider you are. And therefore, because you have escaped from us and invariably an initial grand hoover will follow, this will be even fiercer because you've given us the reminder. And, of course, by sending this letter, you are asserting control over us and therefore... Dependent upon its timing, if it coincides with when the initial Grand Hoover occurs, it will become all the more fiercer. If this closure letter is sent some way down the line, after the initial Grand Hoover has been executed and failed, you're more likely to be smeared or ignored. The desire to sign off with us is a fierce and strong one. It's not logical. However much it may seem to you that it is appropriate to tell us what we are, or to try and end things on less than a sour note, to tie up loose ends, to explain that you know that we are a narcissist, or just to unleash a hat full of hate upon us. You must resist this, because all you are doing is giving us fuel, running the risk of an asphalt consequence, keeping your emotional thinking high, running the risk that we will assert control over you by a hoover, dependent upon the timing, running the risk of initiating or extending a smear campaign, or ending up hurt because we just ignore you, as that is a further assertion of control.
If you wish to gain closure, you must make it yourself. And that is your no-contact regime. That is the most effective sign-off that you can ever give to a narcissist. If you must write something, write a letter to yourself. Or you can even pre prepare a letter to the narcissist and send it to me for publication on my blog. But what you must not do is breach no contact by sending that communication to the narcissist or attending on the narcissist in person. Indeed, thinking about writing such a letter and writing a letter even if you don't send it are breaches of no contact. But if you cannot fight the urge to write something down, then it is better to write it and never send it and send it elsewhere rather than to be any direct involvement with us. The desire to sign off is driven by your emotional thinking and is not logical. It brings a host of downsides, and therefore that is why it is a no-contact mistake. Tempting as it is, do not do it. Resist writing the letter. Resist being consumed by thinking about doing it. Instead, focus on your no-contact regime.